Okay, we're going to see if this series converges absolutely or conditionally, or maybe that series actually diverges. So here's the deal. Whenever the question is asking us if the series converges as absolutely or not, we'll first just take the absolute value and then see what happens, okay? So here we go. This is our check. Go ahead and put the absolute value around the AM formula. So we are looking at this as the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. And then again, absolute value in action. Here we have negative 1 raised to the n minus 1's power. And then we have the over 2m plus 1 like this. And of course, absolute value makes negative numbers positive. So this right here will just be all positive ones. On the bottom, it's always positive already. So this is actually the same as the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. And it's just 1 over 2m plus 1 like this. And now look at this. Does this converge or diverge? Well, we can do a quick comparison. Notice that we have 1 over 2 times n to the first power. And again, you can just pick out the n, right? You don't have to include the 2 if you don't want to. So we can do this real quick. This right here diverges. I will show you why. Because we know, yes, we are doing comparison right here. We know that the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, this right here diverges because, again, just write down this is n to the first power. This is when p is equal to 1, which is test equal to 1, and this right here diverges. Then just do the check, whichever one that you want to do. You can do the, well, actually, you cannot do the direct comparison. You have to do the limit comparison. For the direct comparison, the inequality wouldn't work out nicely, right? So you check by the limit comparison test. And to do this, of course, you just go ahead and take the limit. So I just put on S n goes to infinity. Put down the one that you are trying to figure out, which is 1 over 2n plus 1. Put this down on the top. Divide it by the one that you know, which is 1 over n. And again, if you include the 2 right here, just include the 2 right here. Doesn't matter, right? It's just a constant multiple. Doesn't matter. Anyway, let's multiply this by n and n so that this and that will cancel. On the top, this is just n over 2n plus 1. And then take the limit, you see this and that. For this, you do have to include the 2, right? Take the limit, and you see this is just going to be 1 over 2, which is greater than 0 because we did a limit comparison test. So for this one, unfortunately, this right here also diverges because we did the limit comparison test. Right? Begin by the limit comparison test. But this is not the original question. The original question is that, does this converge absolutely or not? As we have seen already, if you have the absolute value, this right here diverges. But we also have to check, how about if the original one converges? Meaning the alternating version, meaning if we have the negative 1 to the n minus 1 power, does that converge or not? If so, this right here would be a conditional convergent series. If not, then that will still be a divergent anyway. So here we go. Again, it's not absolute uh, it's not absolute convergence because the absolute value right here diverges. But we have to just go back and just check the original again. So here we go. Well if you look at this is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. We have the negative 1 to this power. Let's just put it on the side like this. Negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power, and now multiply by 1 over 2n plus 1. And the reason I want to do that is because this right here will be our bn. And then perhaps I should say the check right here, because this is the same as that. Right? So let's just put on equal sign right here. Anyway, here is the check for this. Two checks. The first check is, well, does bn go to 0 as n goes to infinity? So let's just put down... If we have the n goes to infinity, does bn go to 0? This is bn, which is 1 over 2n plus 1. And look at this. When we put infinity to here on the bottom, yeah, this right here does go to 0, right? I'm just trying to make this thicker so you guys can see better. Because you put infinity to here, right? It does go to 0, so checks. Secondly, well, do we have bn plus 1 less than or equal to bn? Meaning, does b 
Bn decrease. Well, this means what? I just have to put Bn plus, I just have to put the n plus 1 into this then. So we are looking at 1 over 2 parentheses n plus 1 and then plus 1 right here. Is this the same as, is this less than or equal to Bn, which is the original? Like this. Well, of course, let's just do the usual cross multiplication. <laughs> it's easier this way. This times that is 2n plus 1. And is this less than or equal to this times that, which is 2n. And then this is 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 1 is plus 3. Is this true? Of course, you can cancel out the 2n. Of course, this right here is definitely true. Right? So we know that this right here can Burgess by the alternating series test, right? Therefore, you see that the absolute value version didn't converge, but the original version, when you have the negative one and you run through the alternating series test, it does converge. Therefore, we know that this right here converges conditionally, and that's the definition of the conditional convergent. The original version works, right? It converges. But if you have the absolute value, it didn't work. So conditional convergent. Then that's it. All right, we'll see if this series converges absolutely or conditionally, or maybe the series just diverges. So here we go. When the question is asking us, does this converge absolutely or not, we will first check the absolute value version of this right here. So let's go ahead and do the work. Here is to check absolute convergence. We just look at the series as n goes from 1 to infinity. And again, put the absolute value around the a n part right here, which we have the negative 1 to the nth power over square root of n plus 1 in the absolute value like this. Right? OK, the absolute value makes negative 1 to the nth power just always 1. Right? So we are looking at this as the series as n goes from 1 to infinity. And this is just 1 over square root of n plus 1. Does this converge or diverge? Well, it diverges because you can just do a real quick comparison with this run right here, right? So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So here is what we know. And let's just run through this real quick. We know that the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over square root of n, which is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the 1 half power. This right here. The p is 1 half, which is less than or equal to 1. Therefore, this right here diverges. And then we can do a real quick check. Well, in this case, in fact, inequality is not going to work out. So we just do limit. It's much easier this way. So limit comparison test. Okay. So let's go ahead and put down s n goes to infinity. And put down the one that we're trying to do on the top. So we have the 1 over square root of n plus 1 over the one that we are trying to, the one what we know, which is 1 over square root of n on the bottom. Well, go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by square root of n, square root of n. This and that will cancel. So we get square root of n over square root of n plus 1. Well, to take the limit, look at this and look at that. This right here will approach. 1, which is greater than 0. So we get to draw a conclusion. And the conclusion is that this right here has the same conclusion as this. So we can say this right here also diverges by limit comparison test. So we are going to say bye bye to the absolute convergence because the absolute value version you know, didn't work. But we still have to check if with the negative 1 to the nth power, will the original one converge or not. So here we go. So let me just write this down right here again. And perhaps let's just rewrite it. This is the series as n goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the nth power. And we have 1 over square root of n plus 1. In this case, as you can see, this right here is our bn. And just go ahead and do the check for the alternating series test, because the negative 1 to the nth power, right? So alternating series test. First check, well, just take the limit as n goes to infinity, bn is equal to 1 over square root of n plus 1. And we put infinity down 
you in this end, infinity plus one is infinity, square root of infinity is still infinity, one over infinity will give you zero. So go ahead, just do that, right? Do the so checks. Then second check, do we have bn plus one less than or equal to bn? Meaning that is bn decreasing. Well, check this out. Let's just go ahead and put the n plus one into this n, right? So that's pretty much what we have for the bn plus one. So we have one over square root of n plus one, and then plus this one. Is this less than or equal to bn, which is that one over square root of n plus one? Well, cross multiply if you wish. This times that, which is just square root of n plus one. This times that. Is this less than or equal to square root of n plus two? Square both sides if you like, but you can pretty much see this is clearly true. This is so true, seriously. And just script both sides if you like. Again, make sure that you do enough algebra to convince you, yourself and convince people that this inequality is indeed true. Well, both of them are true. Therefore, we can come here and say what? This right here, this is not also, because you just run through the alternating series test, right? So this right here converges by the alternating series test, right? So that's pretty much it. So that means what though? You see, the original version does converge, but if you have the absolute value version of it, it didn't converge. So this is the conditional convergence, right? So know the definition and know what kind of check that you have to do. That's it. Okay, we'll see if this series converges absolutely or conditionally, or maybe the series just diverges. Well, well, if the question is asking us to check for absolute convergence, First, we will check the absolute version, oh, absolute value version of that, right? So let's just go ahead and make that happen. Let me just put down we check. Well, here we have the series as n goes from one to infinity, and again put the absolute value right here, and we have cosine of pi n, and then divided by n squared like this. Well, the truth is when you have cosine of pi n, if n is one, you get cosine of pi, which is negative one. And when you have n is equal to 2, cosine of 2 pi is actually positive 1. So it's actually just negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, so on. So it's actually alternating. But in fact, it doesn't really matter in this case. Because when we have the absolute value around cosine, or maybe for sine, we know the following. So let me just put this down right here for you guys. This is what we know, right? So this is the little note. When we have absolute value, of cosine of any angle theta, we know that this right here is less than or equal to one because that's a range for cosine. So with that being said, we can do the following. We get to establish this inequality right away, right, because of this. So here we go. We'll just write down the series as n goes from one to infinity. Well, absolute value of this is less than one, right? And then on the bottom, n squared is always positive, so we just have 1 over n squared like this, right? Let me just write down the 1 better for you guys. So again, we establish this inequality right away because of thanks to the trick, um, I, the, the, the things that we never found trick. Now, what do we know about this? Notice this right here, the, n is, the, the p right here is 2, right? Which is greater than 1. And this is the p-series, and it actually converges. And notice that we have this right here is less than or equal to that. And we have shown this already, again, thanks to this. So what do we know about that? We know this series also converges by direct comparison test. Because again, this inequality was established by this. You don't have to do the three steps in this case because thanks to that, right? So, as you can see, we took the absolute value of that, and this right here converges. Therefore, this right here is absolute convergent series. And that's it. You don't have to check anything else, right? Because when you have absolute convergence, it's automatically converged for the original version, right? So, that's it. Okay, very similar number 19, but that will be the first page. Oh my god, man. Whew, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, and we have negative 1 to the nth power, 
times n over 3m plus 1, like this. Okay, we see negative 1, so this guy cannot make up his mind. Maybe sometimes it's positive, maybe sometimes it's negative. Don't worry, take the absolute value. That will be the deal. So we are going to check this. Well, actually not. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to check the absolute value. Even though I check the absolute value, this is gone. But you have n over 3n plus 1. Does not approach 0. It doesn't. So we check the limit. We check the test for divergence, okay? Check the limit as n goes to infinity. And here we go. Negative 1 to the n. And this is n, 3n plus 1. And here's the deal. When you take the limit right here, you just have to take, take care of the dominating part, which is the top of the bottom. The one doesn't really matter. And of course, n over n just, you know, 1 over 3, but it's like this. You can write it down like negative 1, and then you have the infinity, and then you have this right here, it's just 3. But all in all, this guy right here is not equal to 0. Technically, this right here, the limit does not exist, right? This right here does not exist. So you can come back here and say this series diverges. This right here diverges by the test for diverges. Like that. Then we got that. Yeah, that's the question. So what do you guys think about that? Notice, inverse tangent is not invited on the list because inverse tangent does not approach infinity. So the truth is, this right here, we can do what we call the test for divergence. And some books, they also call it the limit test. So I will just show you guys this right here. So what we are going to do is, let's just go ahead and check the limit. And I will just write this down right here for you guys. Whenever we check the limit, I think I will just do this, right? I'll just say as n goes to infinity, like this. Because this way, I don't have to write down the LIM so many times. And of course, these notations are interchangeable, so just depending on how you like it, I'll say. Okay, here we go. Let's look at this, which is negative 1 to the nth power over the inverse tangent of n. As n goes to infinity, well, this right here, I'll draw the arrow because we are taking the limit, meaning I'm putting the infinity down here. So it looks like we have negative 1, and on the top we have the little infinity symbol over, and here we have the inverse tangent of infinity, like that. And check this out. This right here is actually what? Pi over 2, isn't it? So this right here is, well, depends on how you know, I'll just put it down here. This is just pi over 2. And of course you can do more, you can put the 2 on the top and the pi on the bottom, but the problem is that this right here does not approach zero. Even though you have like a trouble thing on the top, negative one to the infinity, which is a really bad notation, the truth is this right here does not converge. This right here technically, right, it has no limit, right, the limit does not exist. I should have to say that. So I'll just put down this right here, mm, does not exist, right? And I don't know why sometimes I put down does not exist, I put down the dots, and then the direct comparison test, I don't put down dots, I don't know why does not exist, does not equal to zero. So what we can say is this right here diverges by the test for divergence. TFD, so cool. As long as you show the limit of the an is not equal to zero as n goes to infinity, you are good to go, diverges.